Also I think it would be great if you did an in-depth video on whether mining gold is efficient for credit gain. The general consensus is that it's better to just complete the mission as fast as possible, which I agree with, but I've always been curious about the specific numbers. So, is gold worth it? This is a good question, and it's something I've thought about myself. With the Mission Selector mod, we can take out a lot of variability in the results by replaying the same mission. Once mining gold, and once skipping gold. But if I do it like that, the second run will have an unfair edge, because I'll already know the mission and can do things faster. So, instead, I first did a trial run of each mission, so that the mining gold run and skipping gold run would be on the same level in terms of already knowing the cave layout. To be clear here, the mining gold run mines every gold vein it sees and kills every loot bug it sees. The skipping gold run skips all gold veins and only kills loot bugs when it needs nitro. Both runs mine all crafting minerals because they're simply too valuable to skip. They will also both get compressed gold because it gives so much that it wouldn't really make sense to skip these even if you are skipping all normal veins of gold. And of course the skipping gold run will also sometimes incidentally pick up gold that gets knocked loose by various things. I should also mention that between runs on the same seed, mineral counts vary slightly, normally by one or two minerals, if any. This is probably due to tiny scraps getting left behind, but it's not going to have a substantial impact here regardless. So first I recorded short mining missions. The trial run, the mining gold run, and the skipping gold run, all on the same seed. Then I did all of that again, twice for a total of three different level seeds and nine short mining runs. Then I did all of that again with short egg missions. All of that took quite a bit of time, so after that point I stopped tripling up on each mission type, because otherwise this video would never get finished. One final note, on point extraction I mined a quarks manually, so as to not throw things off via Bosco's incredible a quark retrieval skills. So, after all that, what do you get when comparing two runs that are both on the same cave layout, and with the same knowledge of that layout, where one gets gold and the other skips gold? Putting them next to each other pretty much always results in something like this. The first gets somewhat more credits directly and slightly more experience in exchange for taking somewhere around one to two minutes more time. Both get either the same or nearly the same amount of crafting minerals. Here's my results for short mining missions. These values highlighted in red or green are the important ones. They're what actually shows the time efficiency of these runs. Next we have the long mining mission, short egg missions, long egg mission, point extraction, refinery, salvage, and lastly escort. And I didn't do elimination because I just got done with three back-to-back -back solo max length escort missions. and I doubt it would tell me anything new anyways. More importantly, here's the average. Not unpredictably, you get more credits directly for your time if you mine gold, but your total credits per second are slightly higher skipping it due to the high value of selling crafting minerals. Now, it's easy to look at these numbers and say that skipping gold is superior. After all, your total credits per second, including the value of minerals, is higher, and your XP per second is slightly higher too. But that's making a pretty big assumption, which is the idea that you are actually going to sell those minerals. This is a safe place. Be honest with me. Be honest with yourself. After the mission ends, are you really going to sell these minerals? Probably not, right? Maybe sometimes the daily deal if it's good, but that goes through your stockpile at an extremely slow rate. Besides that, you're sitting on them until you absolutely have to use them or sell them because why wouldn't you? You can say that it's a strength of minerals over credits that has two uses, or rather that it has two values. The first is the crafting value, how it's a requirement for forge recipes, promotions, and mods. And the second is the credit value, what you get when it's sold. But that first value also makes them relatively inflexible. You don't actually normally want to trade them in for credits, because if you wind up needing that mineral for something, 
buying it back is three times as expensive as selling it was, or requires more time grinding. Why sell the relatively rare materials that you may need to unlock things, if you're getting credits normally anyways? So that second value, the credit value, doesn't typically get realized outside of the rare situation where you actually sell the stuff. And if it's not ever realized, it's meaningless. I know personally, I essentially have never sold minerals until the one time I decided I was going to craft all the forge cosmetics. Which, on top of buying out the shop, bankrupted me pretty quickly. So I sold a lot of minerals to get over that hump. But then, once I was past that, I was right back to hoarding them again. And most players won't even wind up doing that in the first place. It is strictly rational to say that the minerals are each worth 50 credits and incorporate that into credit gaining efficiency. After all, that credit value is still technically available, but player psychology is not strictly rational. You have to consider what your goals are when playing the game. Most players are not just looking to make credits go up and nothing else. They want both credits and minerals to go up at the same time. They want to use minerals to forge items or pay for promotions, not trade in for a more common currency that they probably have enough of. And as it turns out, mining gold means you get more credits per second while still retaining all of your minerals to use on the things that require them. Even if you do sell all your minerals and skip getting gold to save time, you're only slightly more efficient in gathering credits than if you actually got the gold. And this isn't much of a surprise if we look at the math. Here's one way to represent credit gain after a mission. A is the primary objective value, B is the secondary objective, C is the number of dwarves that make it into the drop pod, D is the amount of gold you got, and X is the combined hazard bonus multiplier, including things like mutators, length, and complexity. We can turn it into a formula for credit gain efficiency over time pretty easily by adding a couple values. Y is time normally spent in the mission, and Z is the extra time that you spend per every one gold unit. And as it happens, I've just spent a bunch of time getting numbers on my time through levels with and without grabbing gold. Looking at my mining missions, for instance, the amount of extra time my get gold runs take compared to the runs where I skip gold is between 0.55 seconds to 0.8 seconds for every one unit of gold. So typically about 0.675 extra seconds per one gold. Let's say I'm doing another short mining mission. Fossils is secondary. First we put in the objectives and survival bonus. With no mutators, the hazard multiplier will be 133%, so times 2.33. If I gather no gold, I'll complete it in my typical time of 680 seconds, resulting in 2.74 credits per second. Let's say instead of no gold, I gather 100 gold. This increases both the reward here and the time penalty here, but the reward is increased more, and so my credits per second improves to 3.12. How about a bulk blows up in a tunnel, producing around 1,200 more gold? Since Crassus gold walls are thin, so it takes more pickaxe swings to get the same amount of gold compared to normal things, I'll kick up the time spent per unit of gold to 0.9. That might be assuming more of a time penalty than there really is, but nonetheless, the credits per second has now climbed all the way up to 4.28. And of course, if you're using Thin Containment Field or just some good scout movement, you can gather gold more quickly, improving this number, and as a result, your credits per second. Not to mention groups will generally be more efficient at grabbing deposits than solo players, so really these numbers are pretty conservative. And in a competent group of four, you can expect better efficiency than this. Especially since you'll have moments where you're just waiting on another player for whatever reason, and you might as well mine that nearby gold vein. We could continue, but you get my point. Broadly speaking, unless you plan on selling all your minerals, mining gold will in fact get you credits more efficiently, but will get you experience and minerals slightly less efficiently. So it depends on what you're actually farming for. 
Oh, and before I forget, here's the numbers on pots of gold. Not only does it get you way more direct credits per second, but it gives you so much more credits that you actually still make more money, even if you're selling all of your minerals. And you get more experience. So, it's good. 